Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to a quick tutorial in which we are going to understand the image column in SharePoint list. The use case of this scenario would be to capture this image and add it into an HTML such that you can save the list item and the image as a file in a different SharePoint document library. That being said, let's quickly try to create a Power Automate. So as this is a demonstration, I'll select a manual trigger and I assume that you are thinking that it will be relatively easy, right? Uh, you just type in SharePoint, um, see more and choose maybe get item. To the get item, I can pass it the site URL, I can pass it the list name as well. And then I can pass it the identifier. In this case, the identifier is one, so I will hard code it. I want to add another action, say compose, such that I can get the, you know, the file content or at least the file URL of the picture column. So I'll click here and I'll click on, and I see very limited columns out here. In fact, I see 39, but let's try to find my column that is profile picture and it's not visible right so what i can do is actually let me get rid of this action and let's try to run a flow i'll quickly test the flow to see if at all i can get the information so i'll click on get items let me copy the body open up a notepad and try to paste the body in in the body, I don't find the profile picture column. That means it is not returned by Power Automate. So whenever something like this happens, I usually go ahead and try to use the REST API. But before we use the REST API, we need to understand the basics, right? When I click on this image, it gives me a URL, but the URL does not make a lot of sense out here. If I copy this URL and put it in a notepad, it looks like this. So it does not actually tell me where is the image stored. It tells me that it is in drives, right? Let's try to hack a little bit more. Let's try to click on this. Let's try to click on the element. And here as well, it tells me, it doesn't give me the actual location. It gives me the same old link. And so the next resort that we can take is the API. So what I'll do is that I'll try to do the REST API. I'll say underscore API forward slash. I'll say list get items and I'll use the picture demo list name and I'll say get me the first item. As soon as I hit enter here I can let me actually go ahead and increase the zoom. Here, do I get anything related to profile picture? So here, I get some more context about the profile picture, right? I also get the server related URL. If I just want to get data about the profile picture, I can just add profile picture after this. And this actually gives me the correct URL. Now, let's go to this location and check if the file actually exists. So I'll make a duplicate of this. Let me paste it in and let me just remove the last bit of it, right? The JPEG file. And here, if you see, the image is visible. So perfect, right? We get the image location and it's stored in the site assets. Understand this, it's located under the site assets list and then a GUID. So what is the GUID out here, right? So let's try to understand the GUID as well. So I go to list settings and under the list settings, I have a list ID, right? So if I remove the 7B and the last three characters from the GUID and I paste it in a notepad, it gives me this particular number. If I go to the site assets and the list and I check the GUID out here, it should match the GUID that I just copied. So it is 3732 and it ends with 2A. So understand this, my friends. This is the list GUID. So whenever you have a picture, it's stored in the site assets, it's stored in a folder named as list, and then the GUID of your list, right? And under that, you can find your images. 
So now that's all good and let's navigate back to Power Automate and create our flow such that we can get that image. So as I told you, we need to do a REST request. So I'm going to type in SharePoint and let's use the send HTTP action. Let me give this a site name, a method, that's good. And let me give it the URL that we just created, right? So if I go back here and if I append this URL with a forward slash, it should give me the server relate to URL and that is what I'm interested in. So let me run it and let me try to test it. So I'll click on test and let me run it manually. <clears throat> Let's see the output of the send HTTP action. So I need the body. I can take this body, right, copy it and let me parse JSON out of it. So I'll use the parse JSON action to get the JSON add action. So add the parse JSON action out here. The content would be the output or the body of the HTTP action. Let me use a sample payload that I just copied and let me click on done. And let me go and log this output into the compose action. So I log the body which has the profile picture and I'll click on save. Let's see if we can get the server relate to URL out of it right now. Perfect. So as of now, it seems that I have still not got the server relate to URL. So let's do another thing. Let's try to pass it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add an action and type in pass. Let me go and pass, pass the JSON. And to this, I will pass the output of, let's say the body profile picture and I'll test it. So this time it seems that I'm getting some meaningful output. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add another compose and to this compose, we now, we now get the body server relate to URL. So this is what we need to go ahead and get the image and let's test it. Yes, this is what we needed and this is what we have right now. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and get the file content, right? So to get the file content, what I need to do is I need to use the get file content using path action. To this action, I'll pass it my site URL and I'll pass in the dynamic content that is the body server relate to URL. I can click on save and let me try to test it again. Perfect. So I can also get the file content out here. So this is awesome. Now let's finally go ahead and try to add this to an HTML. So to display it, add a compose. And this time I'll give this compose a name, create HTML. And I'm going to paste in some code out here, right? So let me paste in some code, sample code out here. Let me change this paragraph with the title. Perfect. And I'll change this part, right? This part. Let me change this part with the output of the get file content action, right? File content. So I'm going to use the file content and I can click on save. And now if I click on test, you should have an HTML in the compose action, which looks like this. Now, if you see there's some encoding problem. So we need to understand that. Let's go ahead and decorate this. Let's add a function. Let's say that base 64. And to this function, let's go ahead and add a dynamic value as file content and click on add. Finally, let's go ahead and save this file in SharePoint. So I'll say create file. Let me add the file to the PDFs folder. Let me give the file a name. Let me 
give it a dynamic name. So let's say that I can type in title maybe dot HTML and the file content will be the output of the HTML action. So let's save it. And this should be the moment of truth for us if our solution worked or if it did not. So I'm going to click on manual. I'm going to click on test and I'll click on run and done. Perfect. So it worked. So it should create the file in the PDFs folder. So let me navigate to the PDFs folder. And here we have an HTML. Let me quickly try to click on this HTML. And it seems that for some reason, the image is broken. Mm -hmm. That's odd. So let me go back into my Power Automate and let me quickly judge this, right? So if I look out here, it seems that I missed a comma, right? So let me go into the Compose and you know, this is very important. This format is very, very important. In hurry, I missed a comma or the comma actually got added at the end. I'll save it again. And let me try to test it again. Before I test it, I'll just get rid of this file. Perfect. So test, run, done. If I go back here, the file is created. That is awesome. And here, my friends, you have the image and you have the title. I hope this session was informative. Thank you for your time. Have a great day and bye-bye.